Here we go. Go live. <laughs> there you Here go. go. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't notice that it. It was gray, and then I turned my head, and it's blue. So okay, there, there we go. go. All right. So one of these two streams, that's the one I thought would come. There we go. We're all set. (laughs) You you can go upstairs now, Teresa. You are done. Good job. (laughs) All right. So I'm safe to leave that computer. You are safe to use you are safe to leave that computer. Hey everybody, while Teresa makes her way upstairs, let me welcome you into Sundays with Teresa Louise. I quilt too. Did I do that right, Teresa? You sure did, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa normally goes live on Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern time or two o'clock her time. And she likes to do some quilting, cross stitch and other fun things. And so I caught her doing a live stream uh, for the unboxing of the sew sampler box. I was like, well, I was going to sew that live. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun for us to do it together? So what we're going to work on today is she's getting prepared in her studio. I'm just trying to give you expectations for how things are going to go. We are going to work on the project from gosh, was it the January box, Teresa? Yes. It's the January box. Yep. Yep. So we're going to work on that. She has some of her fabric ready. Um, I have none of it ready and we'll talk about why I'm sitting here with my thumbs in a cup of ice water, in a minute. <laughs> but um, oh we figured we figured we'd get the fabric ready and then maybe we could do a part two in a couple of weeks on a Friday night where we actually sew the stuff together and I can have Teresa join me on my channel. So we'll be on her channel for the first part and then she'll be on my channel for the second part. So If you haven't already, since my thumbs are not working, and again, I'll talk about that in a moment, and Teresa's computer is downstairs, could you guys do us a salad and give us a thumbs up? Because I I can't. (laughs) Give us, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And then if you could share this video in the Facebook group, hers, mine, your personal profile, just get the word out that we are live. And um, that'd be a a lot of fun. I am going to act as moderator for a couple of moments, at least for a little while until things are a little better. And I'll, again, I'll get to this in a minute. So I'm going to read the chat out for Teresa and Teresa's going to walk us through kind of what we're doing. We're just going to have a little quilty chat. So she doesn't have to keep up the chat because I'm going to keep up with it for her. So if there's something you want to get in front of Teresa, make sure to tag me in the chat. And I feel like I've said all of the stuff on your live and I have completely taken over. So let me take a no, breath no, no. that you're seated. You're <laughs> I appreciate it. I had to climb the stairs, so yeah, that's my breath. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the channel, Becca. I am so happy you are here today, but I am very sorry about your thumbs. <laughs> and uh, Becca's going to tell us that story here in a few minutes. But so uh, anyway, so happy that all of you could join us. Great to have you here today. Like Becca said, we're kind of changing it up a little bit today because Really, neither one of us got all of our fabric prepped for today. I'm still cutting away, uh, and uh, Becca needs to still cut her. So like she said, we're just going to visit for a while, cut some fabric, um, and visit with you guys. And then we'll schedule another live um, where we're putting it together, and we'll do that over on Becca's channel. So anyway. Uh, the pattern that we are doing, I will tell you, um, this also will give a lot of you time to get your stuff ready, because I know some of you wanted to sew this with us, but you weren't ready to do it yet. So, um, you know, this will give you a couple more weeks. It's the Daydreams quilt pattern um, from the sew sampler box that came in January. Yep. And Uh, Becca and I are both using the um, fabric that came with, which was Corey Yoder um, called Beautiful Day. It's Beautiful Day. And it is beautiful fabric, really pretty fabric. Indeed it is. I just went through my stash and picked out the coordinating fabrics. Becca, did you do the same thing or did you buy some other stuff? I mean, why pull from my stash if I have an Etsy shop available? (laughs) I actually um, looked at the pattern and I just grabbed the fabric that the pattern said to get because that required less thinking. So I have uh, 
all the fabric that the pattern told me to get instead of pulling from my stash. That was a bit of a shortcut. It was a cheat, but I totally took it. Well, yeah. Um, I noticed that um, Stephanie from Stephanie Stitches on her Etsy shop, she has this fabric in. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And so I was thinking of, um, I'll get the main part of the quilt done. So now that we're going to take more time to get this done, that'll give me time to get the fabric from Stephanie. Because yeah. um, I would like different colors for the border than what the pattern has. But, yeah, um, it's a gorgeous pattern. And I... I would like to think that maybe I could change it a little bit because this actually just looks like it's going to be half square triangle units and solid squares. And I, mm -hmm. the, the cutting sizes in here, mm, they're not so great. I don't, I don't love them. So I might rethink some of that, but all TBD, all TBD. Um, I'll read some of the comments out for you, Teresa. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm just gonna start at the bottom and kind of work my way up. You've got lots of people saying hi to each other and hi to you. And I think we kind of cover the greetings. Uh, let's see, Pat Strahow says she loves that pattern. Uh, definitely give us thumbs up, give us a subscription. Zach has said a couple of times that this is, hi, this is Zach from Michigan. So I just wanna call out that Zach from Michigan is here. Hi, Zach. <laughs> Nancy said that is a very cute pattern. Judy says, hi, Becca and Teresa. Oh, this is so great. I enjoy both of you so much. And this is a great idea. It looks like February 22 in the mail soon since I saw it go through my credit card the other day. Oh, February's oh, box is on the way. That's awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And then I th I've got lots of, Lori Miller said that she is cutting also around to it. Said, so nice to see you together live. We've got Marge here from Australia. Ellen is here as well. Lots of, lots of people here at Mama Pop Quilt Shop. Laura, um, Laura Lynn is here. She's Laura. watching us, giving us some thumbs up. Awesome. So, Hello, Laura Lynn. Yeah. We got, you got lots of people watching right now. We're, I don't see any questions, so we can go ahead and um, okay. get started. What are you going to do first? What do you have, what do you have left to do? Um, well, I'll show you what I've gotten done. I'll start with that. Okay. So I, I have all the prints cut out. That part's done. So then I have this much of the background cut out. <laughs> yep. And this. Okay. Okay. And now I just have to keep cutting out uh, the background and the uh, accent. Okay. So I'm at cutting two and a quarter inch squares. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm not sure what Lori is talking about. She's asking me if my eye is okay. Yeah, my my eye's fine. Does my eye not look okay? No, your eye looks fine. It's her <laughs> her thumbs. Her thumbs. Oh look. yeah, my thumbs are not okay. <laughs> they will be shortly. They will be shortly. So I guess I'll I'll tell you <laughs> what happened. Yeah. I have spent all day today having a pajama day. And mom and I have been hanging out, watching TV, playing games, just doing a whole bunch of nothing. And awesome. I thought about 4.30, 4.20, I was like, I'm going to go make a cup of tea and I'm going to head into the sewing room so that I can start working on something quilty. This is the, I haven't been in the sewing room all day today. So this is the first time that I've been in here and I sat down in front of the computer and I was like, I'm just going to start prepping my fabric so that I have some of it ready to go. But I, um, I didn't bring the cup of tea with me because it was still brewing and we bought a new coffee pot that can brew a whole carafe or just single cups. And I chose the wrong setting for my cup for hot water. And so it was overflowing and I wasn't thinking. So I went and grabbed it to dump some of it out at the sink and it spilled all over my right thumb. So I burned this with some hot, hot, hot water. Got it all dumped out, put this under like cold water right away, started wrapping it. And I started brewing my cup on the right setting, put my tea bags in it, put a pack of Splenda in it. And um, yeah, had a little bit of a problem because I came to carry the teacup into the room and it spilled all over this thumb. So now I've got two thumbs <laughs> that have been sacrificed to hot water. Ah, uh, Lori said, uh, your eye look inflamed on your video that I seen your flying geese video. 
Okay, that's probably been a while ago. I had allergies a few weeks ago. Oh. Thanks, Lori. Zach is in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, oh, wow. Ooh, Mary said, do you have lavender essential oil? I bet I do. I bet I could go look for some, but in the moment, uh, I'm going to sit here. I'll tell you, have you, has anybody in the chat thought about or ever heard of putting vinegar or mustard on a burn? Now I have heard of, um, when you get a sunburn to, um, take a cool bath with vinegar water. My mom used to do that to us when we had a sunburn and it yeah. does help. Um, okay. So maybe there is something to the vinegar thing. That's what she was saying. Mom was like, there's vinegar and mustard. So you could use mustard. She also said you could use, yeah, the yellow mustard jewel saying it too. The yellow mustard will take the burn away. Um, she also said to use the, use pickle juice, Kim. And then Amy C is saying no vinegar actually damages the skin. So I, I tried, like, I was like, okay. So I sat out there and mom took this mustard. It wasn't actually yellow mustard. I think it was like brown mustard or honey mustard. And she slathered it all over my thumbs. And she's like, here, rub that in. And I was like, okay. So I did. And I was like, it doesn't really feel any better, mom. <laughs> she was like, okay. And I was like, well, I also have a problem because how am I supposed to touch fabric if I've got mustard all over my thumbs? <laughs> so I just washed it off. It was only on my, like maybe a minute. I just washed it off. And now what I've got is this measuring cup that has just really cool water in it. And I'm putting my thumbs in for as long as I can stand it. And then I'm drying them off and wrapping them in a towel. And this has been going on for about 45 minutes and they're not red anymore. So that's good. But I do think I'm gonna have a blister on this one. Uh-oh. And they don't hurt as much as they did. So I might actually be able to starch my fabric and get to cutting. I just not, not there yet. <laughs> yeah. I think aloe vera would feel really good. If do you have an aloe vera plant. No. And you know what? After today, I think I'm going to get one. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> Definitely. You know, it's funny, uh, Melissa, Practically Creative said, aloe is the best. Do you have any uh, sunburn cream? That works well too. We actually don't. And here's the funny thing. We had a ton of it because my stepson had been burned really badly several years ago. And the hospital sent us home with a ton of that stuff because Jason was burned as, as well during the accident. And um, we had Aquaphor up the wazoo because that's actually what they recommended aqua for. And then this benzo cream or whatever. And we yeah. had tons of it. And when we moved, we got rid of all of it because it was expired anyway. But now I'm kind of like, I don't care if it was expired. I wish we would have kept like one tub. <laughs> Should have kept at least one. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's quilts and crafts is here. It crafts is here. She says, I burned my fingers really bad on a grill. They used mustard and pickle juice and syrup. They heated it in the microwave and it took the sting out and they never hurt. Huh. Never heard of that. It's amazing what people come up with. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Nancy said, how in the world did you burn your fingers? I must have missed that. Oh, making a cup of tea, not paying attention, hot water on one thumb and then the other when I tried to fix it. <laughs> I should have just dunked my thumb. Just dunked my thumb. It would have been fine if it was one, but it's two. Yeah. Right. Well, at least one is better than, you know, they're not both burnt the same degree. So that's good, you know. Yeah, and I think they're gonna be okay. I I like it it is starting to feel better. Natalie says, Hey girl, two of my favorite people ever. Natalie's like your number one fan. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. Hey, hey, hey. Dia Linda says, I keep aloe vera gel or spray near the sunscreen area. I always have it on hand and they use it for cancer radiation patients. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Amy C said, you can buy a bottle of hundred percent aloe. I'm so fair. I have blue skin and burn very easily in the sun. So I keep an emergency supply. I, I feel like once I get these, I feel like I'm at the point where I can get up and keep them out of the bucket, but I feel like I have some aftercare 
for like sunscreen upstairs. I'm going to run upstairs and see if I can get some of that. So, okay. Good idea. Oh, Mary Baldison said, Becca, I'm not sure if this is the right place to ask, but will you ever do a group zoom again? Uh, yes, we haven't done one in March and we're probably not going to, cause I don't have the bandwidth to do it right now. I do religiously do monthly zooms for those that are paying the tipping at $4.99 a month. I do monthly zooms with them. And then anybody that's not tipping, I try to do free ones if I have time and I just haven't had time. Aloe or a glass of water. Well, this is a glass of ice water and aloe will be next. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Kay, the purple wall said, hey, Teresa, not to get ahead of this project, but just curious if you got my suggestion about your panel. Um, I did, Kay, thank you very much. I didn't have time yet to uh, go look at it. She sent me a message on Messenger, but I've been really busy this morning, today. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely will go look at it. Did you see that fabric I got yesterday that I had, Becca? No, no? I didn't. I have to take a look. It is so pretty. You and Tiffany both posted videos about stashes and fabric and stuff. She did what hers yesterday. I saw it pop up. I just, I've been kind of just chilling. And, oh my gosh. What is that? This is called Royal Nights by um, Wilmington Fabrics. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? That's very pretty. I love that. That's great. Yeah. And then um, she gave me, this was from a friend of mine and she gave me this panel too. <gasps> oh, wow. It looks like the Northern Lights. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. I love that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, oh it's goodness. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So I can't wait to do something with this. And one of the recommendations was doing like um the attic window quilt yeah you know, i could see that yeah but um Kay had a different idea i guess so i'll have to check that out but anyway oh netta know. says to try dipping your thumbs in a cool glass of whole milk it takes the burn and the heat out of it all i've got is two percent would that work <laughs> i'm just checking asking for a friend <laughs> <laughs> you know the other thing that you could try Teresa the attic window would be nice but I think Donna Jordan did a video a while ago about um taking a panel and basically what she did is long ways you know how it goes like this she cut strips salvage to salvage and then added like she added fabric on so that the picture from the panel kind of looked like it was going up and it was going down. And she put strips of fabric in between the strips of the panel. I don't know what it was oh. called, huh. but that would look, that might look real good with that panel too. Yeah. Cause this panel is really long and you know, it's very long, more long than it is wide. Yeah. And uh, I kind of feel like a attic window quilt you kind of want the panel to be at least as wide as it is long, you know, like a, like a window, you know? Okay. Okay. okay but, um, so I don't know. And I kind of hate to cut up that pretty panel, you know, <laughs> you could use some really cool, uh, free motion quilting on, it, you know? I, I, yeah. I was actually looking at all of the different lights that were coming out and I was like, Oh, that would be fun. You could do some swirls in one area. You need some pebbling in the other area. It would yeah. just it'd be really nice. It would yep. be gorgeous. Yeah. So I could just do a wall hanging out of that panel and then do a quilt with the other, other fabric, you know, so. You could also but, use that other fabric to put on some really nice borders to echo to pull out the colors from the northern lights oh yeah right that there's too. so many things you can do like paddle are, they're a lot of fun like they're an instant project that it, it gets you kick-started right away <laughs> yeah exactly i i really love having i like i have a lot of panels i haven't done a lot with panels but i actually have a spot downstairs where i is perfect to hang up a panel 
And yeah. so that was my idea was just, you know, do these panels with really neat free motion quilting on them. And then you'd always have a, you know, cute decoration up. Yeah, that's I, can't, awesome. I don't really have space to hang in like a whole big quilt, you know. Yep, so. yep. I have, if I can ever get some time to record a video tour of, it, uh, of the studio, one of the things that I'm really excited about is kind of on the wall where I had my design wall, I took the design wall down and left it, I left it folded up and put away because the reality is I don't use it all the time. And I bought that because it was portable. So I'm going to use it as a portable design wall because I don't, I have very limited wall space and I don't know that I want to dedicate an entire wall to just a design wall, especially if I've got a portable one that I can prop up somewhere. Yeah. So what I've done instead is I've hung all of my, not all of them, but I've hung several mini quilts that I've made or people have made for me on that wall. And now I've got like this whole wall of inspiration and it like most of the, most of them are like 18 or 20 inches wide. So I can change them out really nicely, oh, yeah. but that might be something too, with the panel, you could make a beautiful wall hanging quilt. And if it's a good width, like a, a nice width, you can change it out easily. Right. Yeah. Uh, Sue Smith says, I have a few panels, just never know what to do with them. Maybe you should do a live stream or a video on what you do with that panel, Teresa. Give people some inspiration. Oh, yeah, I'm planning on it. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. looks like Vicki has a shepherd's pie in the oven. Oh, not that shepherd's pie again. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about uh, shepherd's pie yesterday in the live stream. I have not made shepherd's pie in a long time. Me either. Oh, but it's so good. It is. Delicious. Lori Miller says she thinks that the Donna Jordan's tutorial would work really well for that panel. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. Mary's asking, how do I hang my small projects? I actually use 3M Velcro strips and jumbo clear wonder clips. So basically I take the 3M Velcro strips, two of them locked together. And on the back of each side, it's sticky. One side goes on the wall and one side goes on the back of the jumbo clip. And that the wonder clips are stuck to the wall now. And so I can clip my quilts into those clear clips. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I didn't want to put pins or holes in my wall. I also didn't want to put um, nails or push pins or anything into my quilts. And right. I also didn't want to have to deal with putting sleeves or tabs on the back of every quilt. Right. So that's, that's what I do. Not everybody does it, but then it might not be right in all situations, but it works for my studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea to me. Oh my goodness. My, what is, <laughs> Catherine said, what is going on with your precious hands? Oh, I'm just giving myself a little manicure. It's fine. I'm just you're like, you know, when you go sit at the <laughs> manicure bin and they're just like, put your hands in the water. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm giving myself a manicure. Now <laughs> I burned my thumbs making a cup of tea and I've got them soaking in a cup of cool ice water. It's been about an hour now. Um, I think they're probably okay, but with burns, you, they, you actually are still burning yourself a whole lot longer than you would ever think. Still, if I remember right from what, I don't remember the exact metric, but I remember when Justice was in the hospital with his burns, they're like, your body is still burning itself even after like you think it's done. So I'm just dunking it in here until <laughs> it's not red or swollen anymore. <laughs> oh, palm olive. Melissa says palm olive. Huh. Oh, oh no. Colleen is making me hungry. She said, Melissa, I just had burritos, not even a little bit hungry. That's a nice change. I, now I want a, one of those beef and bean burritos. Oh. Um, did you see what Natalie said? She retracted it, but I, I read it before she retracted it. It was funny. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell on her. I don't know what she was really maybe she was saying something to somebody else but she said i have bad gas 
I was like, okay, I'm just going to skip over that one and keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry, Natalie. <laughs> oh, her sister-in-law took the phone and said it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, it was funny, so. <laughs> Kat's got an idea. She said, at some point in the future, maybe you could mount your design wall on the studio wall, creating a moving wall for your quilt on a track in front of it, and then you can move it to use a design wall. Yeah, I actually have thought about that. I thought that would be kind of fun, like make it massive. And then you could like have like a barn door, you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah, yeah. It out of the way when I need to use it and then slide it back when I just want to hang it. And it, um, I think that would be a lot of fun. I think that was, yeah. that's a that's a weekend project. That's that a great be. idea. With your sore thumbs, you could probably take a day off off of work. Cindy said, "Uh, yeah. How does that go? Hey guys, I'm not coming into the office today because I burned my thumbs. <laughs> you burned your thumb? No, no. I burned my thumbs. Plural. Wow. <laughs> I can't drive. Like." <laughs> I'm an ape. I don't have opposable thumbs anymore. <laughs> Angela wants to know what fabric are you using for the background? Um, this is some fabric that I got from So Yeah um, okay. quite a few months ago in the D stash. It, um, it was a five yard cut and I don't think it had any um, salvage to read on it so I'm not really sure those five yard mm -hmm. cuts get me in trouble every time because I'll grab them for a backing but sometimes I just want like a yard of that five yards I don't want the whole five yards yeah I know but um I didn't realize secret window it, sorry I am so sorry Teresa the name of the quilt from Donna Jordan is called secret window for your panel. oh secret window okay Anyway, it's white with little pink uh, vines on it. It all, it almost kind of reminds me of like a wedding dress <laughs> or something, <laughs> you know, because it kind of looks lacy. How's that lacy look? Anyway, it, it the pink in this matches the pink in the fabric over there. So that, that's what I'm using for the background. I, th I think my thumbs are done, but I can tell I'm going to have a blister right here. The, uh, uh -oh. like this, this one's all fleshy colored and it doesn't hurt anymore and it's not puffy. I think this one's all right. This one might need a little bit more TLC, um, but I think, I think I'm okay. So I'm going to pull out my fabric. Did you starch all of your fabric before you started cutting? Yes, I did. Maybe I'll do yeah. that. I don't know why I'm touching heat today because heat is not my friend, but we're going to try. <laughs> Can you put a Band-Aid on your thumb or something? Oh, could I put a Band-Aid on? That's a great idea, actually. And you know what? I have about a gajillion sewing-themed Band-Aids because I keep getting those in boxes. <laughs> At least that one that has a blister. Huh? Oh, I just said at least put one on the one, the one that has a blister. Well, the blister's not there yet, but it's going to happen. Yeah. Lana said, are you okay? Yep, I'll be fine. But I do like your idea of putting some Band-Aids on. <clears throat> this one's still a little hot, so we'll soak them for a little bit longer. But it's like on a scale of... It was the worst in the, in the hot water, and now it's actually tolerable. Did you ever get the cup of tea? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a sip of it. It's minty. It's delicious. <laughs> uh, is it worth burning both of my thumbs for? No. No. <laughs> Especially since, and here's the kicker. So we got, oh, I got two little birdies on my window. Um we bought this new coffee pot for upstairs and we put the Keurig that we were using downstairs in my mom's kitchen. And so I went down there to take some stuff down 
And I thought, well, let me just grab my teacup. That way I don't have to mess with the coffee pot and I can just brew my tea using the Keurig, which is what I will all, oh, Susan said, don't use the Band-Aid, it'll hold in the heat. Um, oh. Okay, got it. Hadn't thought about that. Anyway, so I thought I was going to take a cup down to make a cup of tea with the Keurig and I didn't do that. So I'm just saying like this could have been avoided. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you take ibuprofen? Yep, I sure can. It's right here. And maybe that'll help with some of the swelling. So we'll take some in a, in a little bit. You read my mind, Teresa, with the Band-Aids. <laughs> yeah, up. or even like gauze. The gauze would breathe. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. I don't think, I, I think I have some in a first aid kit in the other room, but we'll see. I'm just going to keep cooling it down. I think I am going to go get some more ice cubes and my yucky water. I'll be right back though. Okay. okay. We'll be here. Look at my messy room. I'll be right back. Hi, Faith. I see you. I see you there. Hello, everybody. Yes, mint tea does sound good. Yep. Um, so what are you what's everybody working on this afternoon? Are you guys just um visiting? <laughs> working on talking in the chat. Yeah, she has a first aid cream. She might have some burn cream in there. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, it's no fun getting an owie on the uh, fingers. My owie is always my knuckle. Right? Swollen knuckles. Is that from arthritis? Yeah, something. It's weird. This knuckle is really starting to... Um, uh, grow out that way, growing the wrong way. Colleen's saying there's going to be a second live on Sobeka's after yours. No, not today. No. We're going to break this up into two parts separated by a couple of weeks. So I think what I'm planning to do, and we'll, we'll confirm and put it schedule the live stream, but I think what I'm planning to do is April 8th, which is that Friday that I'm coming back so I'm taking next Friday off. So like a little less than two weeks, Teresa will join me on camera. And if that doesn't work, we'll find a day that does work for her. But right now we're thinking kind of April 8th, she'll join me and we'll finish the project on a live stream then. Yep. And that'll give everybody extra time to get their fabric cut up if they want to join us. So yeah, because I won't be finished cutting today. <laughs> Lori said she's cutting the fabric for the same quilt that you're doing. Yeah, Lori's been talking to me about it off and on for since we talked about it. How long ago was that, Becca? Oh, a couple gosh, weeks. weeks ago, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And um, there's another girl, too. Um, I think it, her name is Anne. Uh -huh. um, that said she was going to do it with us, but I don't see her on here. There's always the replay. So yep, that's what I watching the replay. Hi. <laughs> Jennifer Turney is working on 12 inch pineapple FPP blocks. I am going to work on refilling my best press bottle. What's your mom working on? What's she doing? Sitting on her butt watching TV. Yeah. Eating her leftovers. I took her out for barbecue last night. Ooh. She had a whole bunch of leftovers from the barbecue place. So she is working on eating that, which makes me feel even more like it's going to be okay for me to go to Taco Bell and get a beef and bean burrito for dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Maybe not. We'll see. That really is the only bad thing about living way out here in the boonies is you can't just run into town and grab a taco or something you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's about a 10 minute drive to taco bell which is a different thing for us because we actually used to have one at the end of our street like we could have walked to it so oh, it's all nice. this is it's not quite as bad as your situation but it is one of the things Lori said the measurements on this quilt shaking my head <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know. 
get um, the purple thing I think you're talking about is my water glass. It's a nice water glass. Natalie said, you women are awesome. Thank you for making my day. Oh, thank you. You're awesome too, Natalie. She's great. Yeah. Angela said, I finally decided to do a t-shirt quilt as quilt as you go, since the granddaughter wants the front and the back of all of the shirts. Oh, geez. My goodness. Oh, boy. Have you done a t-shirt quilt? No. No, I don't have enough t-shirts. I really don't wear t-shirts anymore, and I don't have any of my old ones. Um, so, no, I'm not planning on doing one. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Torney says, I totally agree with Natalie. <clears throat> Robin Boyd says, hey, hey, caught you live. Hello. Lois Dawn Stanley says, question, can you get the pattern for this quilt separate from the box subscription? You want to take that one, Teresa? Uh, sure, I will answer that. And uh, that would be no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it is exclusive to the Sew Sampler box. However, if you have a Facebook um, account, there is a Sew Sampler um, Facebook. Swap Do you group. remember? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's a swap group for the Sew swap. Sampler. Yeah, yep. thank you. Uh, swap group. And sometimes you can find uh, the patterns or fabric or what have you mm -hmm. in that group. So you, you could check it out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I, I actually asked the same thing. So I was like, well, you know, I would love to do one of these on a live stream. So I, somebody asked if you could buy the pattern and I knew you used to be able to, but I knew they also changed it. So yeah. I called Fat Quarter Shop to see if that was something they would consider doing, like selling it again. And they said, no, it's actually part of their marketing strategy that the pattern is exclusive to the box. So if yeah. you want the pattern, you got to get the box. It It's sad because the box is $30 and normally a pattern would cost you 10, but it, so it feels like if you don't like the fabric and the notions, you're spending $30 on a pattern, but you do get quality notions and quality fabric in there too. And it is still of all the boxes that are out there. I think the sew sampler is the most affordable. Yeah, I do too. So, I mean, I, I don't always like everything that's in the box, but um, I would say probably 90% of the time I like the fabric. Yep. You know, out of yep. like say 90% out of a year. Um, yep. So I think that's pretty good. Yep. And I, you know, if nothing else, I actually love the patterns. So yeah. The, if I, if it's a notion that I don't love, I can pay it forward to somebody else. Usually yeah. they're great for giveaways. If it's fabric that I'm just not inspired by, those are great for giveaways because there's still good quality fabric and there's not a ton of it. So shipping isn't ridiculous, but the patterns I usually, I usually love every single one of the patterns and I usually hoard those. I won't, I don't like giving those away. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought of, you know, I thought about that. Uh, it was about a month ago. I gave away a whole bunch of those patterns. Oh, really? And, um, because I thought at the time that you could get the pattern off of, uh, from the fat quarter shop. And yeah. then, um, then I learned that you can't, and I'm like, oh man, I just gave away all those patterns. I'm never going to ah. be able to ever yeah. get them again, but that's okay. They were, pa you know, I don't think I was ever going to do most of them that I gave away. So it's all right. Yep. 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 Now, I think that if I had any one piece of advice with the patterns. I, I would love to see them sell them just because I think that would be great, but I could understand, I can understand why, why they're, why they're not. So that's fine. Oh, wow. Anna's here, by the way. Oh, hi, Ann. I would love to see Fat Quarter Shop offer a digital version of the pattern. Well, I don't see why they can't offer it six months after the box comes out. I could see that. Yeah. You know like make the, make the advert or make the perk for the sew sampler box that you, sew sampler members got it first. They used to do that. In right. The past. right. That's how they used to do it. Yeah. Huh. Yep. But 
Oh, well. Mary Baldison says, I totally agree with you about the affordability of the box. Cute. Um, I do really like what everything we got in the box in January. And this pin cushion is still cute. It is, right? You're already using it. Look at you. I put a, you know, that stuff you um, non slip. Yeah. Uh, cabinet liner stuff. I put uh -huh. some of that on the, glued it on the bottom of this so it doesn't slide around on the sewing machine. Works great. But yeah. That's awesome. It's very cute. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah. still cutting. Go ahead. I'm still cutting. <laughs> There's a, this is, I think, the worst part of the job is cutting it all the pieces. <laughs> it can be very intimidating for sure. So I am ready to start trying to press some of this. So I'm going to starch. Okay. And press my fat eights. This Mr. Bottle is great, but I have a small problem in that it leaks just a drop of fluid every so often and it comes down my hand like it comes down the the this and then it drips down here so I think I might make it's been on my list to make one maybe I'll do one in one of my selfish sews this week I might make a cup cozy to put on the bottle so that I don't have to deal with picking up a wet bottle all the time I hate that um thank you Mary that's really sweet of you um but uh, honestly, I, I don't ever remember what the patterns were that I gave away. Mary said to message her and <laughs> maybe she'd send it back to me, you know, but that no, no. Like I said, I don't, they were the patterns that I don't, didn't think I would ever do, you know, so I'm not having giveaway. Uh, re, uh, Remorse. What's the word? Yeah. <laughs> At all. So I enjoyed giving all those away. Faith said she enjoyed my update video. Thank you. I did too. I watched that. I gave you little smiley and kisses and hugs. Oh, thank you. I haven't, <laughs> I've skimmed through the comments, but I haven't had a chance to go through and read them all. I do like to try to read as many of them as I can. I just haven't done that today because I've been, had my phone down. I've not been playing with social media until this evening. So I've been taking a day off of it, spending some time with my mom. That's great. Yeah. How much longer is she going to be there this trip? I think we're looking at four weeks this time. Oh, is Rick there too? Or he, they came on Friday and then he left Saturday and went home. And I was like, wow. Okay. So you're not staying at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anne says, put a straight pin in the sprayer hole to see if that helps. Okay, I'll try that. Let's see. Oh, somebody was asking, do, do you find that you get starch buildup on the wool mats? What about you, Teresa? Um, I don't spray on my wool mat at all. Um, so I don't know. I can't answer that. Do you spray on your wool mat? Yep. Okay. And I don't know, I honestly don't know how to answer whether or not there's buildup. I mean, it's still usable. I don't notice any flaking or anything. Um, yeah, the only wool mat I have is that little one that came in the sew sampler box and have you tried it? The small one? Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, I like it a lot. I use it downstairs with my sewing machine down there with my little iron. But usually I have all my pieces already sprayed and cut and ready to sew. That might be a good um, setup for just doing your little seam pressing as you're building out your blocks. Yeah, that's what I use it for. And then I have that other one that I got from the Creative Notions. And it, what was that? Uh, llama? The alpaca mat? 
Oh, yeah. alpaca, yeah. Yeah, we got that a long time ago. Yeah. Do you still have that? No, I paid it forward. Actually, no, I used it. I used it up. And the iron that I had actually scorched it through. I had one of the Aliso mini irons and I had like the little trivet that comes with it on my desk, but it, the trivet, <clears throat> the little iron rest that comes with the mini Aliso would always get so hot that I felt like I had to put something between my desk and the hot trivet. So I put a mini wool mat that I got probably in a sew sampler box and the alpaca mat, both underneath that trivet. And the alpaca oh. mat just got scorched over time and I ended up tossing it. So did the, so did the wool mat. Well, that um, alpaca one was pretty um, thin to begin with, you know? Yeah, I did like the way it felt though. Yeah, me too. I still have it. I think it's over by the art quilt. I use it over there. Shelly said the mini Alyssa iron does get really hot and I don't like mine. That's what she said. Faith said that she likes her alpaca better than the wool. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's I it's probably a good thing that they make a, a wide range of variety of things because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know everybody likes something different. So it's a good thing we have a lot of choices. <laughs> That's right. I wanted to love the mini Aliso iron, but it just didn't work for my setup. It was super well, didn't, didn't it um how many did you go through? With that one, just the one, but oh. with the Dritt steam fast iron, I've been through like five of those. They just keep dying on me. Huh. I don't have any luck with that. And then I see other people that have had that iron. It's the only iron they use for all of their quilting and it lasts them years. And I'm like, I don't understand why mine keeps dying. Huh. That like that little one that um, Stephanie uses. Yep. Yeah. I have one of those too. And I've had mine for about three years. See, I, I got one in November when we moved into the house and before Christmas, it already quit working on me. Huh? Weird. Yep. So I quit. <laughs> I was just like, nope, never, never again. I, yeah. This iron works for me. We're just going to stick with this one. I don't even care. <laughs> Yeah, if I ever buy another iron, I think I'm going to get the the one like you got there. That's a great iron. Faith said, Teresa, I have a hint for you, dog, for your dog art quilt. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Lynn says, Becca, you have do you have hard water? I have a water softener system, so not when there's salt in my water softener. But yes, untreated, it is hard water. Oh, okay. Faith said, put a sequin in each eye. It catches the light and looks realistic. Oh. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Thank I you, like Faith. That. How is your dog quilt coming? Oh, it's the same. I haven't. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> Oh, it's one of those projects, huh? Yeah. I had a dream the other night that we got a puppy and it was a Lhasa Apso. Yeah. <sighs> yep. And then I woke up and I said, I want a Lhasa Apso. And Jason said, no. <laughs> so he doesn't, he doesn't want any more dogs. No, well, I'm allergic to dogs and cats, so it would have to be something hypoallergenic, but I, I'm kind of enjoying the season of life where we don't have to find a dog sitter for everything. Although I will say if we get a small dog, it seems like society is more accepting of your dogs going everywhere with you. So there, yeah. if it's a small dog, no big deal. However, um, what he's 
what he doesn't want to do again is the end when oh, it was time to eight. so oh wow that that's a bad bunch of words there they didn't even have to put anything up in the in the message because it was all in their name <laughs> yeah i hate it when they do that <laughs> they, make, they make their name the bad stuff yeah we see them thank you i think angela thank you angela it's all taken care of yeah calm down it's okay what's up guys <laughs> uh, next <laughs> oh Colleen got it okay yeah yeah you can't delete the name neither can I so well it won't stuck. be there on the replay it'll be fine yeah Um, one thing I noticed, I did, I've done this a couple of times, is um, I go live private. And then only the people who already, that are subscribed can see your video. Yep, that's what I've been doing on my live streams. I just set the comments to be only subscribers. And that tends to help out a little bit with the, with the trolls. Yeah. You should be able to still set that, but you'd have to go down to your computer to do it. So if you haven't set it already, then leave it alone. We'll get you. It'll be fine. Yeah. I'll have to fix that part. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't set this video as private either, so. It'll be fine. Yeah. The worst thing they can do is say some things that don't sound kind and we can delete them and hide them and it's not even worth losing any sleep over. No, I'm not going to lose any sleep. That's what we have moderators for. <laughs> Shelly says when she watches your replays, she can't see the live chat. So maybe um, there's a setting in your video where you can make the live chat replayable. So maybe that's something you can look into. I have it on my end. I have it set that okay. it's supposed to come up, but sometimes I notice that um, YouTube, YouTube doesn't post it right away. Mm -hmm. Like it takes 12 to 24 hours for them to, post the um, chat with it yep hyper eve says do you only make quilts um are they asking me yeah uh no i make other stuff i don't make clothes and uh <laughs> although i have made clothes before but it's not my favorite thing to do but i like all the arts and crafts and um trying different projects with uh, fabric. So, yeah. Hyper Eve says, I am learning to make kids ball gowns. Ball gowns. Ball Sounds gowns. like a lot of work. Yeah. Pat Strahow said, subscriber only commenting is a great option. Um, yeah, yep, it is. I thought I had that, uh, but that doesn't stop. They can still go subscribe and then, you know, yep, start commenting. It that's true, but you can also set it up so that they have to be subscribed for X amount of time before they're allowed to comment. Oh, okay. So if you do a live stream and you have that flag set to like one day. They can't get you on this one. They have to get you on the next one. And it's like one of those things where if they really want to give you a hard time, they're going to find a way. You're not right. going to be able to discourage them. Just like locking your door. If somebody wants to get into your house, they're going to find a way. Locking your door isn't going to keep them completely out. Right. 
You just have to well, discourage it. Making your video the live private keeps you out of the um, like people the search screen, you know, when you yep. just search for a live video, it keeps you out of that. Yep, so. you don't want to make it private. You don't want to make it unlisted. You want to keep it public. You just have to configure the live stream to help deter anybody that wants to give you a hard time. And one of the things that I find, Teresa, and I don't know about anybody else in the chat, I just don't give the troll any airtime. Right. Because that's exactly what they want. So, yep. Mute them and move on. Yeah. And if they don't say anything bad, I just leave it alone. You know, I just, I ignore them, you know. Mm -hmm. This fabric is so pretty. Okay. Those are done. Oh my God. <laughs> So there are those. Wow. That is. Oh no, Shelly said, yep, we have been burglarized twice. They kicked in the door even with a deadbolt. Yeah, that's not good. 288. Oof. That's a lot. <laughs> Indeed. Now. Oop, now I need a different ruler. Oh. Now I can do the accent ones. I need the same size for those. So. Um. You know, Angela said, I'll pay you to cut mine. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Nancy said, wow, that is a ton of cutting. Yeah. Here, I'll, sh I'll show you the everything that's cut so far. This. This. And this. That's A, B, C, D, E, C. F, G. <laughs> this one is D and E. It's almost like I have um, chips to play poker. <laughs> Got my chips all, all set up. Guy says, what size will the quilt be when it's done? Um... The large quilt is 61 by 61. And then the other option um, is 29 and three quarters by 39 and three quarters. I'm gonna make the small one. I will show you the pattern that we are working on right now. Very pretty. Called Daydreams. Angela said, I wish I could cut sitting down. It takes a toll on my back. Yeah, it's starting to hurt mine too. But I have one of those weird, weird chairs. <laughs> Catherine's, fabric. Catherine's asking what the fabric is that I'm working with. This is Beautiful Day from Corey Yoder. And this is my last fat eight that I have to press, Teresa. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Then you can start cutting. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I'll have to press the background and stuff too, but at least this will get me started.
Yes, it is Corey Yoder. Yep. It's called Beautiful Day. Yep. I think it's the one that just came out. It or is. people are, are just receiving anyway in the shops. It was supposed to be out in January. I feel like I have a splinter and I don't know where I got it because I haven't touched anything that's made of wood. Got a splinter too? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm just not having a good day. It's <laughs> fine. It's not a good day to work with my hands. Oh, Gladys said she bought all of that fabric for, um, for that from the Fat Quarter Shop. Oh, awesome. Very cool. She must have got the um, optional finishing kit, I think they call it. Yeah, but I don't think they do those anymore. Oh, they don't? Yeah, that's what I heard. I haven't looked, oh. to be honest. <sighs> okay. All of the fabric is, all of the fat eights are pressed. So I'm going to do the thumb thing. Jamie says, I love the beautiful day fabric. Catherine said, the browns with the gray overtones are so beautiful. Uh, Cindy wants to know what kind of chair do you have? What kind of chair I have? Uh huh. Um, I don't know what they call it, but it's it? one of those that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Catherine says she needs a road trip to give me an intervention. <laughs> oh, that's like one of those massage chairs that you sit at. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, uh huh. And you can adjust it, you know. So it's supposed to make you sit ergonomically correct. And you put your knees on the stool, you know. Kneeling chair. Oh. Shelly said it's called a kneeling chair. Kneeling chair. There you go. And it does work pretty good. I wish it. I wish I could get it a little bit higher. But. Okay. Let me see how many, what do I need to cut from the blocks? Angela from says, yes, the Fat Quarter Shop has temporarily stopped the finishing kits but they do have um, the yardage available. Okay. I gotta stand up for a few minutes. <laughs> My back okay. is starting to move. Okay. okay, everybody, time to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> do our quilters exercises. <laughs> I did that on the last live too. Oh, did you? That's a good idea. Yeah. I like I that. Like, okay, it's been over an hour. It's time to stand up. <laughs> That's a good idea. <sighs> All right. So it says for that, we're going to need this cut. Oh, we have plenty. Yeah. Um, this is how much I had left over, Becca. Okay. Okay. So if I there's, cut this my way, then we should be okay. Yeah, there's plenty. All right. I mean, even if you cut it the way you'd like, like, look at this big piece I have. Hmm. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So I might be able to incorporate some of this in maybe into the binding or not binding a border and do kind of like a little bit of a piano key. Yeah. That'd be very pretty. Yeah. I like to try and use up as much of the fabric as possible. Mm. So I don't have too many scraps. <laughs> I got people saying, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Every good, good girls and guys. <laughs> 
just in case Zach's still out there. You know, I haven't seen Jim in a long time. I hope he's okay. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen him either. I saw him a few weeks ago, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Beverly, it's from the January box. Oh, I was at the, um, <laughs> Colleen said, Teresa, I'm awake. That's the best I can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to my uh, sewing group meeting mm -hmm. Friday mm -hmm. and one of the, one of the ladies there told me that her grandson watches my videos. Oh, wow. And he lives over um, in Oregon. Okay. Um, over by Bend, Oregon, which is kind of the center, okay. lower center of Oregon. But I, she said, yeah, anything Elk City, he's, I thought that was funny, but I don't think I've ever seen him comment. So I think his name is Lloyd. So if you're watching, Lloyd, hi. <laughs> and also, uh, your grandma told me to tell you hello. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Oh. This size on the cutting is ridiculous. It is. I agree. I won't tell you the size, but I will tell you that one of them says to cut it something and five eighths. <laughs> something and five eighths. So be very careful. And I always get worried about whenever it says like do something in five eighths, because I feel like it means that I'm going to have to be very intricate and very careful when I piece something. So I feel like I might already be setting myself up for failure. Yeah, I think it, um, if I would have looked at this pattern beforehand, I might not have. <laughs> or I would have different. Yeah, I would have done it different. Because. Well, yeah. I'm not sure where they're using that one at in here. I haven't even really looked forward. Um, well, I look at it this way. The half line is four eighths. So when I'm cutting these, if anybody gets confused about it, all I need to do is go to that one little line just past my half line marker and I'll be okay. okay. Yeah, or you can uh, mark your ruler. You could. And I don't know how I managed that, but I did. Perfect. Okay, the first fabric is cut, but this one looks like it's gonna be a little shy. Let me see here. Oh, let me see. Yep, it's a little shy. So I'm gonna put this in my scrap bin. Okay. Look, this is my scraps. Okay. Where's... I told myself that this week, <laughs> Lori said, I told you the measurements were shaking my head. Um, yeah. I told myself this week I was going to prioritize some selfish sewing. So maybe I can get a head start on building some of these blocks because there's no way I'll be able to do all of them during my live stream. And there's also no way that this week I'll be able to do all of these. So if I can get this work this week on starting to get it cut, then maybe 
next week, I can start piecing it together and continue working on it on that Friday live stream. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about too, Becca. It's yeah. just go ahead and start working on these and maybe have a couple left to do on the live stream or something. Yep. And then you can work on putting the blocks together. Yeah. So you can show the blocks being put together and then just put everything together. Yeah. Pat says, I would figure out the size of the triangles and use the multi-triangle method. I feel like Pat's always thinking like three steps ahead of the ball game. <laughs> if I had the brain energy, the brain power, I would have just rounded everything up. I would have been like, okay, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We have a pattern and we're going to follow it. <laughs> yep. This time. This time. Next time, maybe we don't get so lucky. Yeah. Hi, Denise. What plans do you have for this weekend or this week, this coming week? This coming week. Mm -hmm. Well. Anything fun going on in your world? Not really. Uh, well, it depends on how much more snow melts. Okay. You um, still have snow, huh? Yeah. It depends on what side of the house you're on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're thinking about building a greenhouse. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So we might get started on something next week for that. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I love that for you. I really miss my greenhouse. I had one in Oregon. Uh -huh. And I had a really nice garden. But since we've been here, I haven't. Um, definitely have to have a greenhouse here to grow anything or a covered garden because it just stays gets too cold at night even in the summertime and so that's why i haven't um, had a garden here okay but now that brandon wants to have a garden too <laughs> <laughs> now it may actually happen yeah now it may happen that's awesome yeah i got to see brandon on camera when i was getting the live stream set up with tiffany and he's got the best mustache i've ever seen <laughs> i'll have to tell you he's uh tell you him you said that that's funny it's it's pretty impressive that mustache is pretty impressive Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing really good. Yep. He's doing pretty good. Still able to go for his walks at least twice a day. Good. Yeah. He walks a little more than a mile each time. That's awesome. Yeah. And we got a path. Now, now that the snow is melting, he can go through the forest again so that's nice i'm anxious for the weather to get just a little bit warmer so that we can keep so that we can do um go explore the woods around the house yeah that'll be fun yep and there we go that five oh. eight is messing me up get mushrooms out there oh yeah, I, don't, I don't know i'm sure we could i just i haven't explored i had a whole bunch of um belize mushrooms in my yard this fall. really oh my gosh and i ended up uh, picking them and then I cut them up real thin and then I dried them mm -hmm. and um, so I got like two and a half large mason jars full of mushrooms wow 
Mushrooms, mushrooms are kind of like that one thing that I'm always nervous to try because like I in my head I'm like is this the one that's poisonous oh yeah (laughs) wild mushrooms I don't know that I could do that (laughs) yeah and I grew up going with my folks getting mushrooms so I Karen Rabbis wants to know, what are we working on? Do you want to show them the pattern again? Sure. I'd be happy to. We are working on cutting the fabric for the Daydreams quilt. This came from the Sew Sampler subscription, monthly subscription box that comes out monthly. And um, this was January. And the fabric that came with it was Corey Yoder called Beautiful Day. And you can see Becca has some of it there that she's getting ready to cut. Yep. And it's very pretty. It is very pretty. And um, one of the cool things about this pattern is it gives you two size options. And I believe Becca is planning on just doing the small one. Yep. And I'm doing the larger quilt. That's right. So Becca's will be about 40 by 40. Unless she's smaller. (laughs) Or smaller. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thinking I should have just put four blocks together and called it good. (laughs) So that's the beauty of this, right? Like whenever you have these patterns where it's just the same block repeated a million gazillion times. If you don't want it to be the size that the quilt pattern says it needs to be, you can totally just put it together in like a nine patch or a 16 patch and you'll have an instant mini quilt or table topper, wall hanging, whatever it is you want. So I am looking at the back of this right now and it's a 16 patch. So on the back side of this, the mini quilt does 16 of the blocks where the larger one does more than that. I can't tell you what they are because I can't see it, but I'm looking at this and I would like to make the mini quilt, which means I need to make 16 of these blocks. However, maybe I only do a nine patch. We'll see. We'll get there when we get there. (laughs) Or you could do four nine patches. (laughs) Yep. Yep. That would make nice little gifts. It would. Or so even yeah. um, like um, table topper or something. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I like about any pattern really is, you know, you can change it up. You can make it, it smaller. Make it bigger. That's right. It's just more or less fabric. <laughs> when you're dealing with a pattern that's not a sampler quilt and it's just the same block repeated x number of ways if you can take a little bit of time to do the math you can figure out how to make it bigger or smaller yeah that um quilt app that I used earlier today really helped to figure out how many strips I needed to cut out um, for the amount of squares we needed. Oh, really? Yeah. That RK. Oh, Robert Kaufman app? Yeah. Yeah, I like that app. Karen says, oh, wow, I thought you were doing the one before that. Oh, I got that box. I still have to finish my sparkling stars. I've got all the blocks made. I just got to put them into the quilt top. So maybe that'll be something I do on a um, on a live stream. Melster Morton says, could you give some information on the monthly boxes? I'm new and I have never purchased any. Would you like to do that, Teresa? Um, sure. So um, it's a quilting subscription box sent out by the uh, Fat Quarter Shop. 
and um, usually every month, but there are some shipping delays, so they're a little bit behind. Um, the box is um, $24.99 a month, but when you first sign up, uh, there's a registration fee of 99 cents. Um, and then after that, it's $24.99 a month. It's $4.98 for the shipping. And then you pay tax, whatever your tax in your state is. So I pay like, it's a, I think it's like $32.80 total a month for the box. Um, it usually comes right around between the 15th and the 20th or tw right in there. But because of shipping delays, it's, you never know right now when you're gonna get it. But they don't charge you until they have the box ready to ship. Yep, so, it normally okay. ships on the 20th of every month if there are no shipping delays. So the, um, Teresa's got some, oh, perfect. That's that's not right. Uh, if Teresa's got this box, she opens it on her channel. So you can go check out her unboxing videos. If you want to see what those are, I have unboxings for them as well. A lot of people actually do unboxings. The box that we're talking about is the sew sampler box from fat quarter shop inside each of these boxes, you get a pattern, uh, for a project, a pattern for a block of the month, some designer fabric, not usually all of the fabric that you need to put everything together, but at least enough to get it started. And then you get a couple of notions too. So 30 bucks, you get some notions, some fabric, two patterns. It's like a little treat. It's like a little taste. Yep. And I, Becca and I both feel that, um, it's one of the most affordable project boxes out there. Even though you don't get the whole, all the items for the project, you, you gotta remember it's a sampler box. <laughs> so you're getting samples. That's basically it, yep. It yep. is, a, I mean, less than $30. I, with shipping in the US, it's $31.39. That's what you pay? Yep. That's with my shipping. Yeah, I think I mine is thirty two eighty. So my tax is it's because of the tax. Sales tax, sales tax. Now I think of the month prior to this was the fabric that I didn't care for. <laughs> yeah, that was the gray. Yeah, that not everybody loved. Are you all done cutting? No. Are you just done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on these now. I'm, I'm done cutting all the squares. Now I have to cut the rectangles. And then I'll be all done. Teresa, um, uh, Nancy says, Teresa, Rebecca, can you order that box month by month? Nope. You have to sign up for the monthly recurring subscription, but you can cancel it really easily. Yeah. Um, you, you don't, they don't lock you in for like three months or six months or anything like that. You can sign up for having and have it reoccurring, but then go ahead and if you get one month, cancel it if you don't like it. So, yep. Canceling is really easy. You can do it on the website or you can call them. They don't hassle you about it. It's, you can try it. You pay 99 cent reservation fee and then they charge you when the box ships. And if right. you don't like it, you can cancel it anytime. Right. You now, um, have you ever heard if they, if, do they ever have extra boxes? I've never looked into that actually. Yeah, me neither. I do know some of the other subscription boxes out there. Uh, sometimes they have extra and they sell them, but I never s noticed if the fat quarter shop ever had. I just know fat quarter shop is always, there's always a waiting list. It's gotten a little bit, that waiting list has gotten a little bit under control though. Be I think yeah. people have been canceling because of the 
um, shipping delays, unfortunately. So I feel yeah. like they have more, they've been having more spots become available on the wait list right now. I look at it like this, like, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm sad that the fabric isn't like the boxes aren't shipping out on time. And perhaps there are things that they could do differently to make sure that we're still getting something every month. But the amount of work that goes into curating these boxes is done months in advance. And so to, they, to change something last minute is really going to be kind of difficult. Right. I appreciate that they're at least keeping you updated through emails and they don't charge you until the box ships. So they're not just taking the money off your card and then you're sitting there with a backlog of boxes that haven't gone out. So I, I think they're doing the best they can with the situation that they have. I agree. And um, I don't mind really that they're, that they're behind. Me either. <laughs> because it it's kind of giving me... And giving me time to get caught up on some of them, you know? Yep. <laughs> so, yep. Doesn't really bother me. Nope. The only thing I think would bother me is if I got charged uh, for two boxes in one month. I wouldn't like that. I think because they're, I'm, I think they're even I'm on, doing a good job spacing it out, like the catch ups. Yeah. Well, I'm on a budget, monthly budget, you know, and so I guess I should have deducted that amount already from the, my budget, but. <laughs> no, a lot oh. of people, a lot of people do like a monthly budget and look at just like what their income is for that month and what's going to go out that month. So right. that's what my mom does. That's kind of what we do too. Like we just look at month over month, right? Okay, yeah. hold on. This was there. So one, two. Let's see what people are saying. I'm sorry. I've got my head down in my ruler. Okay. <laughs> Faith says, what budget? <laughs> <laughs> the non-existent existing <laughs> oh you okay yeah i'm all right stand up again Everybody get up. No, 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 no. Everybody get up. <laughs> yep, I'm up. Everybody has to get up. <laughs> My dog looks at me. <laughs> oh, it was so funny the other day. <laughs> now, in the other room over here, there's a bed. And uh, I have a stuffed dog on one of the pillows that uh -huh. I've, had for, I've had for years, as long as I can remember. But anyway... The other day, Willa and I were in there and um, she's like, she's like looking over at it and she starts going oof, 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 like that. I'm like, what's the matter? And finally, I got it that she was barking at that uh, stuffed dog. I'm like, oh, oh really? Yeah, that one has been there for a couple of months, you know. <laughs> like, so I picked it up and I, you know, took it over there to her. And sure enough, she thought it was a little dog, I think. Oh, that's so funny. It is funny. This is giving me so much joy to just sit here. I normally don't like cutting fabric, but I'm excited to know that I'll have this project cut so that when I'm ready to start sewing it, I can, I can do that. So I will, um, I will probably put this in one of my project bins so I can keep working on it. Yeah. I'm having a, having a good time just cutting this fabric and my thumbs don't hurt anymore, by the way. Oh, good. I was just going to ask you that too. <laughs> no, we're all good. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think um, today's been very stressful at all. 
Mm-mm. Nope. Today's been a really lazy day. Like I um today's been a great day. This weekend's actually been pretty good. Yesterday I had a pajama day as well. I had a sinus headache. Like I couldn't get rid of it oh, until no. like in the evening, but then it finally went away. And I took mom out to Tuesday morning and we got her some stuff for her area downstairs. And then we went to Mission Barbecue for some for some barbecue. Was it barbecue ribs? Oh my gosh, they have everything. They have pulled pork, brisket, spare ribs, baby back ribs, all the ribs, lots of ribs, everywhere the ribs. It was good. So I got um, the brisket with the spare ribs because I picked a two meat combo and it was really yummy. Um, And then I got a side of cheesy potatoes and green beans I ate like two bites of the cheesy potatoes and packed the rest up to bring home. So I was pretty sure mom was going to want those. Mom got the baby back ribs, which she liked, but something they did something happened because they normally are not spicy there, but they sprinkled like some cayenne or something on there. So she she took a bite and she's like, Oh my goodness. It's burning my mouth. I was like, well, (laughs) I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah, it'll be all right. Oh, no. Marge, that's not good. She said her... um, her grandson just failed the RAT, so they're in quarantine for a week. Oh, He's no. okay. He's okay, she said. Has the sniffles, but no school or, wa- or work or shopping. Ooh. Well, be sure and gargle with warm salt water. <laughs> I tell everybody that. You must gargle with warm salt water. Get that stuff out of your throat. Oh, Nancy got a new puppy. Oh, puppy. See, I must have been dreaming about Nancy's puppy. What kind of puppy did Nancy get? Um, I don't know. She's had uh, Sadie for 20 days. Oh, no, she's haven't done much. Getting my new puppy, she said, in 20 days. Okay. What kind of puppy is it? I don't know. Let's wait and see what she says. Yeah. Gigi had ribs last night. Ooh. Memphis barbecue. Yum, yum, yum. Boy, that sounds good. Hello, Teresa Smith. <laughs> I remember she changed her uh, name to be T.T. Smith. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but it's Teresa. She can't fool me. <laughs> Um, well, it's always, always fun to get a new puppy except for the potty training <laughs> that part's not fun no okay how many i feel like even if you get a dog that's been properly house trained you still have to go through like breaking them in in your home right like you, you can't just right And then when they get older, we had the problem with Aiden, like, even though he was housebroken, he wasn't all of a sudden because he couldn't hold it in. It was hard. It was really hard at the end. Yeah, we've had that problem with just about every one of our dogs. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Nancy's getting a mini dachshund, black and tan, all the way across the state. Oh, Colleen said, that is tried and true advice. Warm salt water at least three times a day. Yes. Even sometimes, um, like when I go to the, my little store down here in town, 
Um, oh. If I see somebody in there who looks like they have a cold, I, well, I get out of there as fast as I can, number one. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I come home and I uh, scrub up and then I gargle with warm salt water and brush my teeth and do all the things, you know. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah. Well, I used to get um, strep throat a lot. Really? Yes. When I was younger. And um, so my doctor told me that I should gargle every day with warm salt water. That'll help get rid of the bad bacteria in the back of your throat. Okay. I'm going to have to start remembering that, yeah. especially with a elementary school kid in the home. We, um, yes. we actually got the flyer the other day from school about middle school information night where you get to go like see the middle school. And Zoe's so excited. She's like, can we go? Can we go? Can we go? I'm like, yeah, would you settle down? It's fine. It's not happening right now. <laughs> Wait, where did that flyer go? I want to make sure. So I don't know what, I don't remember what day it was. It's somewhere probably on the floor. My room's a mess. Well, that'll be fun. It will be. It'll be lovely. You know, Teresa, a two hour live stream. And what I will have done is stopped my thumbs from being burned because they're all better now. And <laughs> cut my fat eights and that's it. Ah, <laughs> oh, hey, Sean. Sean says he loves my shirt. Hi, hey. Sean. What's up, Sean? But you got to rest, sort of, and visit. Yeah. One, two. I don't have to count those. I keep counting out loud. And I'm trying to not say like the measurements, but I keep doing it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, 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 yeah. That's okay. I do it too. I was I'm not doing it you how many I need. Oh, it goes this away. Where did you get the shirt? I designed it. You can uh, get it from my my uh, merch shop underneath my videos. Four piles. Yeah, they ain't gonna work. Do you have a whole bunch of them? Um, you they're print on demand. So um, I have like four or five different designs and you can have it printed on a number of different items and a variety of different colors. And so you go pick out the item that you want. You pick out the design that you like, and then you pick out the item that you like and they, you pay them and then they oh. make it and send it directly to you. So I'm not involved in that process at all. I just get a small commission because it's my design. Right. But if I were making the shirts or buying them in bulk and keeping them here, I would make a ton more money. I just, I don't have the room for it. So this is an easy way to have merch without having a ton of stuff stocked in my house. Cause right. I don't have that. Well, I don't think you really even have the time for it. Do you? Nope. No, nope. I have precious free time and I would rather spend that free time sewing or making a video or doing a live stream. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to find all the ways to make all of the money. Right. If I, I didn't support. have a nine to five, it'd be different. Right. Well, and you like your job too, so. I do. I love my job. So it's not like you're looking to get away from your job or anything like that. Nope. I'm very happy with my, with my life. I am quite okay. 
It just means I don't have as much free time to do all the things I would like to do. So I have to be choosy about what I commit to and what I don't commit to. Christy said, are you planning to sell the digital SVGs? I've talked about that a little bit, but I actually had Ian look at the SVG file and there would be a ton of weeding and I don't know that they would come out well. So I just don't, I just don't have the bandwidth to do that. I would like to in the future, but the file that I made for the shirts I don't think would cut nicely on a cricket and I just don't have the bandwidth to clean that up. So this is one of those things I would love to do, but it's a, has to be a down the road thing. It can't be a right now thing. Have you seen what Tiffany's working on this afternoon? I have not. I haven't even talked to her today. I Like I said, I have no social media today. I took a break. I was like, nope, I'm not. Oh, I did you. pull up my, I pulled up YouTube studio and read through a few comments and replied to a couple of them. But no, I was just, I'm, I took a day off. I think that's important. It is. From it all the media. <laughs> yep. And I, I feel like it's also important to find sewing projects, kind of like what we're doing right now, where we're not pressured in doing it on a live stream, because I feel like sometimes we lose the joy of making things when everything that we're doing is on a video or a live stream. Sometimes we just want to enjoy the process. So for um, me, this project feels very much like a selfish sew, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I have to agree. I don't feel pressured to go fast and get it done or anything which was a night and day difference from friday night right yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's much more enjoyable to be able to visit you know yep i mean sometimes it's really fun to do a jelly roll race or something like that you know but i don't think it's something i would want to do every week <laughs> yep Brenda Foley's asking, is your commute to work longer or shorter? Like, how does it compare now that you've moved? It's different. It's the same number of minutes, but in a different way. Less, less traffic, right? Yep, less traffic. So when I lived in Arlington, I was seven miles door to door from the building I worked at. And that seven miles, I would have to cross over the Potomac because I would work in D.C., that seven miles would take me, if I took the freeway and there was normal average traffic, that seven miles would take me 40, 45 minutes to get there. I did have some side roads that I could take right up until the Potomac, but I still had to get on the bridge. So there, it was very congested. This, this commute is not a city commute. I take country roads basically for most of the way. So the distance between my house and the office I work in, the new building that I work in is about 17 miles. And it takes me 40 minutes from door to door to get there. But the difference is my, for the first 12 or 13 miles of my 17 mile commute, it's on country roads with one stoplight and like two stop signs. Oh, geez. Yeah. All nice. it's one lane going in each direction. I do go through a very small town and that town, the speed limit gets really small and it gets really congested because there's not even a stoplight in that town. There's just a stop sign in that town and it can, and there's actually railroad tracks that go through that town as well. So the train could stop me or the stop sign could get stopped. Or if I time my commute going in or coming home, just just right, I can get stopped by all the school buses. So my 40 minute commute could turn into 50 or 55 minutes if I get caught at a stop sign or the train or the school buses. Um, but for those reasons, I leave out of the house at like 645. And I'm usually to work by 730. And then eight and a half hours, because 
that's what you have to work eight hours plus your half an hour lunch and you have to take the lunch. So eight and a half hours. So I leave at four. So I'm usually home by five. So I leave every day, 6.30, 6.45 and I'm home by five. But in order to do that, I need to be in bed by nine. And so what I'm reeling with is really all I have for myself every evening is four hours from five to nine. And in those four hours, I need to be a mom. I need to be a wife. I need to take care of stuff in the house. I need to work on YouTube videos that I want to do. I want to have time for me. And I, I don't really have all of that. When I got to work from home, I didn't have to go to bed at nine and I'm a night owl. <laughs> so I didn't have to go to bed at nine and I could just wake up, throw on some clothes and sit down in front of my computer. My commute was like five minutes to walk upstairs, grab a cup of coffee and sit here and start working. So right. I, I get that hour commute back each way. So that's two hours plus the hour in the morning to do all of the prep for makeup and hair and all that stuff to go to the office. So I get like three to four hours back of my time when I get to work from home, which means my free time, instead of being four hours is seven or eight hours. And there's just so much more that you can do. Plus I feel like the busyness at the office is different than the busyness that you have while you're working remotely. Not that it's bad. It's just a little bit more chaotic. There's, there's, I'm dealing with people. I'm still doing the same amount of work. I'm working while I'm home, but while I'm at the office, I'm interacting with people. So I come home and I am drained because I've had to deal with all the personalities, all the faces, all the voices, every, like, I just, I don't want to do anything. So by the time I get recharged enough, it's bedtime. So yeah, it's, um, all that to say it's, it's, not worse. It's actually a better commute, but it's the same number of minutes. And, uh, yeah, I will yeah. say and you got to get used to going back to work again, too. I mean, yeah. going back to the office, yep. you know, yep. I mean, you've been being able to work from home for quite a while or yep. doing, doing the part-time in the office and then at home. And, you yep. know, so now you got to, what, yep. what do you think? You think you like it better working from home? I do, but I also like working from the office because I feel like I make more progress when I have access to the people in the office. Yeah. So it's, I'd like to see a blend of being able to do part telework, part working from the office. And I will say my employer is working towards that. So my position does allow me that ability. So hopefully, and then, and this is what I've been holding on to, and I really haven't talked about it because I don't like talking about my work because then it's always, where do you work? What do you do? I don't want to get into any of that, but I will tell you, my employer is looking very closely at what positions can have a hybrid, right? Nobody's ever going to be allowed to work hundred percent remotely, but they are willing to allow us to have a 40% telework schedule, which means two days at home, three days in the office. And I think that would be perfect. It's a great balance, but yeah. it takes time to get that through all the proper channels and get all the HR stuff and everything else done and get that out the door. That's something that I think is coming in the next couple of weeks and it's going to make an immense difference. I think that would be great. It you will know, especially especially where you've gotten so used to that now, you know, I think, but I, th like you said, there's benefits to going into the office. One of yeah. my last, one of my last jobs was, um, you know, I went to the office from like eight, sometimes seven o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the afternoon. And then I went home and I could take work with me, you know, yep. work from home for a couple more hours or not, you know, because yep. I was just eight to two or seven to two, um, Monday through Friday. And, yep. uh, but yeah, so it, it's, but you got to be really motivated for, to work from home too, you yep. know, and, and people learn that they can't interrupt you. You're in work, you're at work, you know? Yep. Jason and, now works a hundred percent from home. My sister has worked a hundred percent home for years, ever since before the pandemic, my mm -hmm. I, I see Mara, I see a couple of people in the chat saying that Zoe and Jason could help out around the house. And I actually like Jason actually does a lot. Jason cooks dinner. I, whenever I go into the office, he cooks dinner. He also gets Zoe up every morning, gets her to school, makes her breakfast, gets her to school. He gets her from school. 
He takes her to any activities that happen in the evening. Like they're doing a fencing class right now together. He takes her to that. So I don't have to, he really, he really does as much as he possibly can. So that when I'm home in the evening, those four hours, I don't have to do tons of house stuff. It's not like I'm coming in the door and doing the laundry. He's doing that because he's home already. I do have to put my own clothes away, but that's fine. Um, but he wa- he does a laundry. He picks yeah. up around the house. He cooks. He takes care of the kid. I feel like he's getting the short end of the stick most of the time, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But even I though... He, I don't know. I think he enjoys it. He does. He does. But I think the struggle that I have is I feel guilty because I want to be able to help and I don't want him to do all that stuff. He doesn't mind, but I want to be able to do stuff with him too. So I, I, if I have four hours, that's a very small amount of time. So I want to, I know we're going to spend an hour doing dinner together. That's a family thing. We eat dinner at the table, all of us together, no screens, no electronics. That's our time to have family time. And then after dinner is over, I don't just want to disappear to my hole. So I want to spend some time with my husband. And that's why I start getting into that. By the time I get to my sewing room, I really am just like, I'm Jason's going to be heading up to bed soon. And I have a rule. I don't know how many other people do this. Maybe Teresa, I'd love to hear what you do, but I don't like going. I don't, I like going to bed at the same time as my husband, even if I'm not going to go to sleep. I'll take a book, I'll watch a show, I'll listen to some music. Even if I'm not tired, I just like the act of us going to bed together, even if we're just going to talk. And there have been occasions where I'll go to bed. He goes to bed super early because he wakes up at like 4.30 every day. But there are times where I'll go upstairs to bed and after he's kind of fallen asleep, then I'll get up and come downstairs and do something else because I just can't sleep. So yeah, I was just going to say that uh, we, you know, that's kind of what we do. We go to bed usually at the same time, but if I can't get, it's usually me that can't get to sleep. And so once he's snoring, I'm like, well, I'm going to get up and <laughs> go do something for a little while because I can't just lay there and I don't want to wake him up by watching something on my phone or, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. yep, yep. We, I am, I am very I feel very lucky and I try to count all of the things that are positive, right? So in my Mm -hmm. sewing room, I've got two chairs that are kind of sitting in front of a window and he actually will come in here and sit with me too. So it's nice because my studio is on the main level of the house because it's in the old garage. It's on the main level of the house. So when this door is open, like I can still have conversations with him while he's cooking. He's right there when he's doing laundry, he'll come in and sit down. It's a whole lot different of an experience than sewing in the basement. I used, I found when I was sewing in the basement, he wouldn't want to come down there and just hang out, but he'll come sit out here. It's a nice place to just sit and talk. So it's, um, I, I am very, very genuinely happy and blessed that I have who I have. And by the way, tomorrow is our anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. Thank you. I don't know what I'm, I got him. This is so stupid. I, we, I don't know what to get the man because he never wants anything and he's so like minimalistic, but I did buy him a miniature vacuum cleaner for his car. Cause he likes to vacuum his car. So I was like, well, I, I got him that. I don't know what else to get him, but I got yeah. him that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah so i wouldn't well, mind one of those and you don't have to lug out the vacuum cleaner out there all the time yep and you don't have to worry about going to the car wash and putting the coins in and stuff so thank you nita thank you shelly thank you nancy thank you jennifer thank you everyone that's going to start typing that <laughs> how long is, uh how long now mm. um we're at the point where we've lost count does that oh. matter <laughs> <laughs> uh we met in 2006 and started dating and got married in 2009 so th- i guess this is 13 years awesome yep. yeah i think i would i think this year is 25 i'll be our 25 yeah yeah <laughs> how did you how did you guys meet um i actually knew him before he uh lived in the same town that my mom and dad did 
and he knew my mom and dad and was friends with them. And, um, but I happened to be married to somebody else at the time, you know, uh, but then years later, you know, after I got divorced and then I moved home, um, we ran into each other and yeah, That's we awesome. started dating. Yeah. We didn't date very long before we got married. How long did you date? Two months. <laughs> But you've been married 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> I met Jason at work, actually. We had both taken a job in Southwest Virginia, down near Bristol, Tennessee, working for the same company. And we both had moved to that area essentially for the job. My mom and my sisters lived down there. Everybody my whole family was from the Detroit area, but my mom moved down there years before. And at some point in our life, I have two sisters and a brother. We all lived down there. And, uh, I was married before. And when I got divorced, I moved to Virginia. Cause I was just like, well, there's nothing here in Michigan for me. The job markets and I don't want to be here. So bye. So I moved to Virginia and I met Jason there and we started hanging out and then we started hanging out a lot. And it was so funny because I, I had it in my head. Now keep in mind, my ex-husband, I met him when I was 16 and like, he was my high school sweetheart. I, I spent my twenties with the man. So I didn't know really what to expect <laughs> on the dating scene, but I had it in my head that he would be like, will you be my girlfriend? I'd be like, okay. Like, cause that's what you do in high school. That is not how it happened. It, we just... <laughs> we started talking and we started hanging out and we had a lot of shared interest and we really liked spending time together. And I thought he was cute. And so I spent more time with him. We hung out for probably about three months before we had our official first date, which wasn't even really a first date. It was just the first time that we did something where we held hands. So I called it my, I call it the first date. It was actually on Halloween of 2006. So yeah, we, um, we dated for a couple of years and then decided to get married and we got married in March of 2009 and bought a house in June of 2009, moved into it in November of 2009. So we owned it for a few months and rented it back, moved in in November, 2009. And then in February, 2010, I got pregnant. So it was like married house, baby, boom. <laughs> You did all the things right at the, all the things like right out of the game, like boom, 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 (laughs) all the things. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Well, so what are you guys going to do tomorrow? Are you going to work? Yeah, I didn't take the day off. Um, we really like getting crabs. So in this area, I'm sure people know this, but just in case you don't, because I didn't. Remember, I'm from Detroit. I didn't move here until I was almost 30. So in my world, getting crabs meant you went to someplace like Red Lobster and you got like the snow crabs, right? You got like the crab legs. No, not here. Not here. You get the blue crab. Right. And I, (laughs) funny story about that. Several years ago, when we first moved to, when we first moved to this area, Jason has two kids from a previous marriage and the company I was working for took everybody on a company retreat up in Maryland. And so we went for a four day weekend. It was all pay, all expenses paid. And one night they had a crab feast. And so we're like, okay, we'll, we'll give this a shot. They brought out the whole crabs and put them in front of us and showed us how to do it. And my husband's daughter started crying when she realized that she had to move organs out of the way. So yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. So we were like, no, 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 we're not doing it. And so for years we never did. And I love seafood. I love crabs. So I was looking a few years ago for a place where you could get crab legs. And I couldn't find any place other than like red lobster because every place around here, when you type in crabs, they're like, oh, you must mean you want the blue crab. No, I don't want the blue crabs. I want the snow crabs. I want the snow crabs. So we found a place that did both in Fairfax, which we actually like. And I went in there and the guy, a lot of times they don't let you buy just one. They make you buy them by the bushel. So you have to get like a half dozen or a dozen. 
Um, mm-hmm. but this guy let me, I was able to buy one. And so he walked me through, he showed me how to do it. And I, I really enjoyed it. I was horrible at, it. I made a mess and my hands were horrible because it's sharp shells and stuff, but yeah. I got hooked and I like going and I like eating crabs. So that's one thing that we like to do on a date night. We'll go get crabs because it takes a while to get through the meal. It's actually right really low in calories, very high in protein. So it's a healthy meal choice because they're all steamed. They're not fried. I don't dip them in butter. So it's a, it's a healthy meal choice and it's a great date night activity because it takes up a lot of time. So maybe we'll go, maybe we'll go get some, um, crab leg or some yeah. Maryland crabs tomorrow. That sounds good. That yep. sounds really good. Carla says I've been picking crabs since I was six years old. Now I'm teaching my grands to pick Maryland blue crabs. Yep. <laughs> Lori said, yep, that's Detroit food craps. <laughs> yeah, that's um, one thing Brandon says about out here. We don't know what lobster and crab is really. He's from um, Connecticut. Oh, okay. So, you know, and he's worked back east quite a bit. So they used to eat crabs and lobsters all the time, right off the boat. <laughs> we spent a good amount of time in Boston I won't get into the whole story, but <clears throat> Justice had a fire accident several years ago when Zoe was a baby. And both he and Jason, um, Justice is my husband's son from a previous marriage, both he and Jason were severely burned from it. And they were in the hospital for a little while. Jason was just a few days, but Justice was a long time. And they had to transfer him up to the Shriners in Boston, the Shriners Burn Center for Children in Boston. And we spent a lot of time in Boston, almost like our second home for a while. Jason practically lived there. And there were, um, there was a place we went to, I can't remember what it was called, but I saw them on Yelp. They got really good reviews. We had lobster tail. It was the best lobster tail I have ever had that new England stuff. It's like right off the boat. Like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Brennan was a a commercial diver and so he was. He was always out in the ocean, you know, on dive jobs and stuff like that. And they would just, when it got close to lunchtime, they'd bring up the, whatever they had caught in the, in the baskets, you know, and then that's what they would have for lunch is they had these little cooking things on the boat, you know, that they could cook their lobster or crab in. Yeah. That's awesome. I Wouldn't that be awesome? It would yeah. be awesome. I always watch that deadliest catch show and I'm like, look at all the crabs. <laughs> and I think I heard, I think I heard a rumor that like with crabs, like the king crabs and stuff, you can, t- you can tear the claw off like just one. You can't take the whole, both of them and they grow back. And so I, I don't know. I don't know if maybe somebody I'm gullible. So maybe somebody's pulling my leg, but I thought I heard that you could take the one crab the one claw off and they'll grow it back. And so it's huh. sustainable. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I'd have to look it up. That's a, that's a question for Mr. Google. <laughs> <laughs> so did the, did the mustache scare all the fish away when Brandon would go diving with the. Like no, the... I don't think so. <laughs> Has he, he always had it? You know, the mask on. Uh, that's true. That's true. The big, you know, it's not just like a scuba diving, it's a uh, commercial diving. So he had the big, all the stuff, you know. Well, Tessa says you can take the legs. Cool. <laughs> um, has he ever shaved the mustache and come out like completely clean shaven? Yeah. And do you send him back and tell him not to look at you until it's regrown? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what did you do that for? Or he'll, uh, he'll leave it sort of there. It's still a little there, but he'll just trim it like a quarter of an inch away. Oh, I really hate it when he does that because (laughs) it really hurts. Yeah, it does. Right. Like when Jason, so Jason, when I met him, he's always shaved his head, but when I met him, he would keep like a goatee. And it was just the right length that like when you kissed him, it didn't tickle you or scratch you or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then he started like clean shaving and I was like, okay, that's going to be fine for like day one. But on day two, I'm not touching you. Yeah, exactly. 
I'm like, I can't kiss you now for, you know, two or three weeks. <laughs> and then you're going to get mad because I didn't kiss you. And we're going to talk about how this is your problem and not mine. <laughs> exactly. I was like, don't, why are you shaving that off? You know? And then I always, during the winter, I always tell him he should like grow his facial hair. And oh, that yeah. way, you know, like I have a little beard. So when he goes for walks, his face isn't getting so cold. I mean, if I could grow that, if I was a man, you know, I, I would grow one in the winter time. <laughs> hey, there's no, gen- there's no gender <laughs> rules. Grow it anyway. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> but he, uh, now he has a CPAP. And so he needs to keep it trimmed just a little bit differently for uh-huh. his mask to work right. And when he has a beard, it he just loses too much air. So anyway. <laughs> three Phil Lynch said the first time I cut my husband's hair, my daughter told him to glue it back on. <laughs> uh, well, Becca, we're after four o'clock, you know? Yeah. And I'm getting hungry. Everybody's like, now I yeah. want crabs. Don't worry. So do I, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some dinner made for the babe, the baby. And, uh, yeah get some laundry done for work. I do everything on Sundays because Jason's never home. So I do have a load of laundry I want to put in. So probably should get going. Well, I got all my stuff cut. I'm ready. I got half of my fat eights cut, (laughs) (laughs) but it was nice to just cut. And mom's been coming in here working on some handwork. So maybe one evening this week, we can just sit and visit mom and I can sit and visit while I continue cutting this out. And if nothing else, I have all the pieces cut ready to go that I can start on that live stream. So yeah. Laura Lynn, says, Laura Lynn says, thanks for the chat ladies. Hey, thank you all for being here today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And- Don't forget to subscribe to Teresa's channel. If you haven't done that already, make sure to give her a little thumbs up. And she will be live next Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure to follow along with her channel to see all of the fun boxes that she's opening and projects that she's working on. Thank you, Becca. And be sure and subscribe to So Becca (laughs) if you're not already. (laughs) Let's just pimp each other. (laughs) And don't forget to subscribe to Mama Pop Quilt Shop and everybody else in the chat. (laughs) That's right. And I also want to thank our moderators today too. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I always forget to do that. Anyway. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Becca. No problem. (laughs) I'm going to click a button on my end that will stop the live stream, but it will keep the zoom meeting going. So 